Hello, thanks for joining me. It's Sunday and I've been in all day and I was getting a bit bored to be honest so I thought I'll have a little tickle out and clear up a few loose ends, a few odds and sods that I meant to mention in previous vlogs that uh, for some reason I didn't. Well you know the reason, it's because I'm butterfly brain because I don't know uh, I don't know what day it is half the time but anyway so I thought I'd bring you with me. Initially I wasn't going to bring you with me but then I thought well no it's a good opportunity to do this and I'm not far from home I'm, uh, incidentally, I'm quite close to, some of you will have heard of it, certainly in the UK, but I'm quite close to a place called Alton Towers. I'm on the back roads around there, so any traffic coming the other way is probably coming from Alton Towers, because Alton Towers, if you haven't heard of it, used to, it's like a theme park set in the old grounds of an old sort of stately home. I used to work there when I was a boy. I think everybody in our area used to work at Alton Towers at some point. And uh, yeah, happy times, happy times. You're young and carefree, aren't you? You've got no money, but uh, nothing bothers you, does it? You know, it's brilliant working up there as a kid. So, but yeah, Alton Towers used to be, I bet it still is, it used to be in the top three tourist attractions in the UK, like paid, where people had to pay an entrance fee. I mean, no doubt there's places where they get more visitors that are free, but uh, Alton Towers was one where, yeah, I think it was Alton Towers, Blackpool Pleasure Beach, and, oh, Madame Two Swords. I don't know if that was like a particular Madame Tussauds, the wax works, the wax, there you are, that's the entrance to Alton Towers. But we aren't going there, we're getting on this back lane. Yeah. Now, when I used to, uh, when I was young, before I worked at Alton Towers, I, I guess I was at high school, and uh, we used to come along here, and this was like the, uh, the back entrance, and we used to sneak in. Because we couldn't afford pay to get in, it was, it's always been quite expensive. And uh, as a, a local, you know, you know all the tricks. And uh, and we used to climb over the fence and go across a bit of a, a thing, and we used to get in for free. We didn't do it often, but we used to come up and go, you know, sneak in like kids do. But um, they got wise to it. They got because yeah, I wasn't the only one. Here. There was probably hundreds of us sneaking in every day it wasn't just me it was like it's like Piccadilly Circus <laughs> and and then they put this dirty great big big fence up and uh, had patrols going around with Alsatians and stuff like that you know God knows what, what they did onto a little 10 year old kid but still I don't suppose they'd have let them off they were just for show but anyway so this is Alton Towers so to get to my business now I was telling you Oh, first of all, something that came to mind was, have you adjusted your rear shock absorbers on your bike, on your Classic 350? I bet you haven't. I bet most of you haven't. I bet mo Now, of course, people say, oh, well, I have. It's the first thing I did. Oh, of course they did, ah. Yeah, I, I get that. But uh, I suspect lots of people don't bother, do they? They just ride it, think, oh, this is all right, and I'll put up. Well, what I did with mine, just by... Uh, I want to encourage you to try it a little bit because I think when I put mine up, mine was on like the Fermi satin and I was just playing about like I do and I dropped it down to about halfway. I think I dropped it down about three notches and I think it's successful. I think it, it I mean, I'm, a, I, I'm about uh, 200 and what was it this morning when I got on scales about 240 pound so don't know what that is but it's not thin but anyway I think it rides better it's got a bit more give now I've gone to about halfway setting and um, it's a bit more compliant I mean you wouldn't think so on these roads you could probably hear my voice but uh, that's that's an old B road in up by Alton Towers that's riddled with you know telling and surface since 1846 but yeah have a look at that if you find that you know just uh, your, your, your tool the tool to do it in your toolkit and if you just knock it down a few notches I find it rides better it might actually go you know if I do it a few more it might help it further still I don't know I might try that in the future it is a little bit fiddly but it can be done pretty easy it's fiddly because the black um, the black tubing on the side gets in the way of your shock absorber uh, 
you know the way you put your seat spanner on on the on the ring it's a bit tricky to get it on I'm getting a rear at that puddle but try it I like it adjust your shock absorber see if see if you can find a setting that's a bit more comfortable for you so that's that one that's my shock absorber and the other thing that I forgot to mention yesterday or the day before uh, on about accessories that I've put on my bike I missed one I missed a cracker as well my heel and toe shifty now I know people will have different views about this some will like them and some won't well let me tell you I love mine absolutely love it I think it was 35 quid it was about 25 pound plus VAT plus postage and it turns out to be absolutely fantastic well I love it I love it to bits I would would I go back to the other one I would not I would not absolutely go back to the original gear leaving so if you've never tried one get one I think the pro it's probably a bit like very focals you know when you tr first try very focals and you don't get on with them and you think oh no I'll just put them to one side I'm never going to get on with them well just persevere like you did with the very focals and you'll find that in a week you wouldn't be without them and that my heel and toe shift is just like that exactly like my very focals it is so that's that covered now big big thumbs up a big tick for very folk for very focals yeah for heel and toe shifter hey big tick for very focals as well now on the last one I said I took the windscreen off because I wasn't getting on with it partly because my camera was firing through it so, uh, but partly because I didn't think I told you all about it I didn't think it was really big enough to be called a touring windshield but so I said I said on here that if anybody wants it contact me and uh, we'll come to an arrangement well thank you Matt Matt's contacted me and he's in Stoke he's not far from me so I'm going to drop it him off uh, so he's having it he's having it because he says he rides it all all through the year and it might give him a bit of protection in the winter months so i hope it does matt i hope you get on with it and uh, yeah so thank you for that it would be a dereliction of duty if i didn't put on the photographs that people are sending me first one up now all i've got is a little kimco 50 scooter hey so they are you see in the uk we all think they're driving up and down on big harleys and gold rings and stuff like that well they aren't look some of them have got royal enfields and uh, there's all sorts going on over there and this lad's got a little i presume it's a lad I mean, hey i think it uh, hey who knows this person has got a little kimco 50 very nice but moving forward if you do send me a picture you can send, tell me your name and tell me what it is and maybe where you are you know it's more interesting for the viewers hey it's just a thought i'm not having a pop thank you for sending the photograph in but uh, yeah a bit of info would have been good and the second one i've got is matt now matt i think matt's near to me somewhere because i do know he tells me that he bought his bike from Pottery's Motorcycles which is obviously in Stoke and it's a Halcyon Green it's a Halcyon Green uh, Classic 350 sent me a couple of pictures of that beautiful bike nearly had one nearly had one of them but ultimately settled on my chrome I think he was wondering what I was shouting at. Oh, no through road, I said no through road. No through road, it says. Oh, well, I'm on my little Enfield, aren't I? I can always turn around if I can't get through. So Matt sent me these pictures of his little, uh, of his Alcyon Green 350, and he tells me, and I believe this is a, a, a pretty regular problem, every couple of months he gets warning lights come on it and the warning lights sort of extinguish themselves after a couple of days now i've seen that before of other people now did somebody say did i pick up from somewhere that uh, if you clean the relays out i mean we shouldn't have to do that should we on a brand new bike but there you go if you clean the relays out of all the grease and waterproofing and guns they put in the side in the uh, relays in the side panels it stops that so 
I don't know if that's true. I, touch wood, haven't had any issues with my warning lights. But, Matt, I know you're not alone, mate, because I've seen it. I've seen it on forums and I've seen, uh, you know, I, I, I've heard of that before. But, hopefully, it'll uh, resolve itself. Uh, and what Matt did say was he, uh, he used to have sports bikes, but he's not really missing his sports bikes now. He's got his Anfield Classic and uh, he's joined life in the slow lane and he's loving it. Yeah, same as me, mate. I didn't have sports bikes, but I've had big adventure bikes and big tourers. What's not to like about these little things, eh? Especially on roads like this. Hey, up, I need to look where I'm going, don't I? Right, here are. Oh, well, let's, let's, go, let's just go on this grass a bit. There's a bit of scrambling. Go way up, here we go. There you are. What's not to like about a little end field? Brilliant. Look at the views up here. Nothing much wrong with them, is there? Hey, we're on top of the world. On top of the world we are up here. This is called the Weaver Hills. Now, another supporter of my little efforts here, another supporter of my little channel, is Wally. And he's in America. He's in Ohio. Springfield, Ohio, from what I can remember. And he's, he said, I asked him to send me some more pictures. He's let me down. Come on, Wally, what's up with you? It's warming up a bit now, isn't it? Hey, up. Can he... Oh, dear. Can I go across there on a, on a... I don't know. I think that might be pushed it just a bit. I haven't got me... Uh, I'm not on a Himalayan, am I? I'm on a little classic. It is a bit muddy. It's a bit wet. It's only just getting dry. So let's go back the way it came. Oh dear. Right. Where's the road gone now? Oh, I think that's the way it come. I can see my tyre tracks. There we are. You know, these bikes, this machine, aren't they? They go anywhere. Pair of nobles on this, it would go anywhere. Perhaps not anywhere as much as a Himalayan. A few cars up here looking at the view, look. Right. Okay, so Wally in America. So I asked him to send me some pictures, and he hasn't done it yet, but I'm sure he will. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he'll come through for me, send me something that we haven't seen before. Because, I mean, I'm showing him the UK, aren't I? Hey, up, slow down, old lad. Anyway, uh, Wally has sent me an old picture of, of him and his buddies, him and his mates, on a ride out in Ohio. I think it was something like... Thanks, mate. I think it was something like Ash Cove in the Hardy Hills or something in Ohio. There's a few pictures there. And then he's by some... Uh, some damn wall or something. Oh, and I do remember this was Portsmouth, Ohio, because I remember Portsmouth from, you know, Portsmouth in the UK. See Wally, that shows your heritage, don't it, eh? Portsmouth. We've had a Portsmouth, I don't know, a thousand years ago. You've only had 100 years. What's up with you? <laughs> hey, you're only joking, mate. You're very welcome to it. You're very welcome to Portsmouth. Anyway. So that was Wally. He sent us some pictures. Thanks very much, mate. And I look forward to receiving a few more. Now, road closed. Emergency resurfacing. Please find alternative route. Oh no, oh no, I've gone down it, haven't I? You know what happens now. Do you know what happens now? Shall I tell you what happens? The comments box. I get people telling me how irresponsible I am and how I'm, you know, I'm, 
they're making out him like Al's angel and I'm, I'm not obeying any of the laws and it says road close so what are you doing going down the road close what are you doing putting that number plate on here what are you doing do, do you know it's like oh come on lighten up a bit like give us a break there's no need is where's he come from see road close he's come through a road close as well hasn't he then he's Skoda I wonder if they have Skodas in America I don't know uh, oh, 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 across that cattle grid there's nothing wrong with this road is there it isn't even shut but the sign was there saying it was shut so we don't know I don't know what's going on thank you so right next one Bill he's in Uddersfield I know Uddersfield just up the road wow uh, not really just up the road but I know Uddersfield and he's got a classic 350 he's got one of them uh, silver ones I'm not quite sure of the exact terminology of what it's called I can't remember without looking it up so thanks for that Bill that's that done you're on great to see and I think the last one I've got here which came through just this morning was Morgan and he's in Espana and he sent me a picture of his mate's bike which apparently you know we run about exhaust and the noise they make and uh, you know performance and all that well I think that's an early engine in that isn't it Morgan I think that's an early engine and it looks like it's got a nitrous oxide system on so I don't know how much noise that makes but Jesus Christ it must be like a spitfire when it starts up well no it isn't really because on a, on, a, on a more serious he says the nitrous oxide tank is just for show don't do anything just helps balance the weight apparently but look at that there I don't know what that is I hope it's another new Himalayan because I don't, I don't know if I fancy it anymore but that's his mate Arley and he's in, in Espana at the shooting club apparently so I don't know what they shoot I don't know what they shoot they probably shoot anything over there don't they perhaps the perhaps British tourists I don't know hey don't want to say that don't want to say that so he's at the shooting club in Spain he said it was cold as uh, when they go to the shooting club they go up over, over a mountain or something and it's really cold and uh, he said something about eating gloves or eating hand grips or something but that's Morgan in Espana let's have a little run up here now this place is called Cotton near Alton Towers and up here years ago when I was at school at the local what we call comprehensive school the local UK sort of state school between about 11 and 16 years of age most of us went to state schools in them days there was grammar schools if you were really clever when you came out of primary school at 11 you took a, a test called 11 plus which they've done away with now and if you were if you were top stream if you were did really well you went to grammar school and uh, anyway they still had private schools then of course they did and just on the left here I'm just looking at it here and I don't think you can see it was that's the church associated with it I can see was a private school very affluent you had to have a lot of money to come here and pay but uh, yeah I'm not sure if you can see that but it's all pretty much in ruins now hopefully you can see that you can't get in obviously there's the church in front of me and the school buildings are just behind it just through there in a derelict state now but uh, so quite what happened here I don't know but yeah really affluent oh the uniform it was like you know we had stuff from car boot sales and they had like you go boss you know what I mean 
Yeah, but it's, it's it's sad really to see it in that state. Even the, even though they were posh and like privileged kids, really, they probably didn't realise it themselves. They probably just thought it was normal, didn't they? But yeah, it is a shame to see it in this state. Can't really see much, can you? But uh, there you go. That's the that's the school. Hopefully, the the camera's picking that up. That's the school. And it's in a state of uh, disrepair. Hey, up! I've got to get back up this ban bank now. What am I like? Right. Let's get cracking along here a bit. You know, behind me, we've got Alton Towers dirty horrible muddy B road again and uh, like I said earlier I used to work at Alton Towers as a kid me one well my two memories of Alton Towers was because I was only a kid and they had this uh, how can I call all the areas on all those different areas and there's different themes to each area and one area, it was like Dinosaur Land or something, you know, I can't remember what it was called. And we used to work on the rides and, you know, we thought we were, because we, we run the rides, we thought we were really important. Anyway, one day the gaffer said to me, they'd got this, like, plastic suit. And you got inside it and it, and it was like a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was only six foot tall, it must have been a baby one. And you just walk round, you just walk round in it. I can't remember it growling at people, but I can remember distinctly you looked through a bit of mesh underneath his head, underneath his chin, like you know, and just walked round and uh, sprung up on people. You know, they'd be you'd, they'd be standing there eating the chips, and you poke your big head over the shoulder or something like that. Then they drop the chips, chips and scream. <laughs> Used to do it to all the all the girls, all the attractive girls. You know what I mean? You'd sneak up behind them and think, "Ha ha!" Anyway, you'd do that. Well, one day I'm standing in this suit, and you always had a chaperone. Well, eventually we got a chaperone. I'd got my chaperone at this point. I'll tell you why we had a chaperone in a minute. Well, I'm standing there looking at uh, just just in plain sight of everybody you know and there's this bloke telling his two kids how this monster that was standing in front of him was operated by little electric motors and uh, remote control and i'm thinking you're on about i'm standing here looking at you and yeah and the stuff he was coming out with well it was phenomenal i wished i could remember it but i can't I think I was dumbstruck by his... I was astounded with how stupid he was because I'm standing there wiggling my little arms about you know, wagging my tail I mean physically wagging it, moving my backside like that and... and he's saying, oh well there you see son remote control's marvellous what they can do these days I thought, listen to him here, those brilliant ears Anyway, to go back to that you know I said to you there was a chaperone. I tell you how the chaperone come. That was me again. I'm in Tyrannosaurus Rex, and there was these scousers. Hey, so if anybody's watching this now, you, you might be from Liverpool. You might think, yeah, that was us. Yeah, you buggers. And what they did? Do you know what they did? They thought it was funny. They pushed me over. They jumped on me. I, was, I got jumped by about ten scousers in a Tyrannosaurus Rex outfit. <laughs> it's funny now, but at the time I was frightened to death because I thought I was going to get kicked to death. And they didn't do anything like that. It wasn't like that at all. They just thought it was funny, pushed me over. But the trouble was, was having been pushed over and left on the ground, I couldn't get up because I'd, I'd only got like an arm that was a foot long. And I couldn't get up. I, I just lay there till eventually somebody spotted me or somebody reported me as lying on my side. And then they come and uh, somebody come and pick me up, and from then on in, you had to have a chaperone if you went in Tyrannosaurus Rex. But that was me. 
the memories you've got, eh? Wonderful memories. Where did them days go, eh? Where did all this time go? Here I am. It was only yesterday I had my FS1E. And my brother was checking the chain over and making sure the brakes were... Hey, up, what's going on here? Jesus Christ. Pheasants. Have you ever seen anything thicker than a pheasant? Anyway, yeah, memories, eh? Where did that time go? And here I am. I'm well into my 60s now. I'm still as soft as a brush. And, you know, I bet the youngsters look at me thinking, oh, God, you're like miserable and that. And yeah, I am miserable at times because we've, we've lived, haven't we? We know, we know what the world's got to offer. And the world ain't always roses round the door, is it? You know, it I wished it was, but you know, we all have we all have crosses to bear, don't we? But them days, yeah, yeah, and my Tyrannosaurus Rex. I went on in later life to have a reasonably serious job, you know, and I'll bet some of the kids that were looking at me were thinking, what a miserable old git. You know, we hadn't always been miserable old gits, have we? We were young once and we used to have a laugh. And now I get my main last riding around on my little Enfield, so that can't be too bad. Anyway, this drags, this is dragging on now, so I'm going to call it today there. I just thought to get a few things off my chest and uh, and do a little bit of a not really catch up, but just to clear up all these loose ends. So I hope. So if you've been watching this, I hope you found something of interest. Andy, I'll see if he waves. Oh, he nodded to me. Oh, Kawasaki 650. I remember them. They were all right, weren't they? Um, I hope you found something interesting. Please feel free to comment and like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Send me your photos or any anecdotes and uh, to shottostravels at gmail.com. And with a bit of luck, I'll see you on the next one. Um, so until then, watch out for all the lunatic drivers and watch out for these potholes. And make sure you ride safe. I'll see you soon. Draw. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy, but things are fine.